hello everyone welcome to cod blacks youtube channel in this video i will be guiding you all on how to control the brightness of an led or controlling the current flow using pwm waves if you want to learn more on avr codings please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon let's jump into our video So basically what is PWM? PWM is a pulse, it's a basic electronic pulse with certain modulation. So we do modulate the generated electric pulse to get what we want. Let's look on to the uses of this. Using the PWM wave, we can adjust the speed of a motor and also we can use it for various measurements. and as i said before we can use it for power controlling and also for some communication purpose because using pwm we can generate waves for a specific time with a specific voltage initially we want to understand the concept of duty cycles to understand about pwm waves a wave when it generated as it is shown in the screen you can see from start to the end this is considered as a whole wave cycle in this wave cycle there is a period where it is switched on it is switched off altogether these two p things are known as the common wave in this wave the time where the wave is at high or on is divided by the total period and when it is multiplied by 100 you will obtain the duty cycle of wave so this is a symmetric wave where you have 50 percentage of duty cycle and as you all can see here the duty cycle is very low since the period where the wave is on is very low and in this video we're going to use such a wave to control and adjust the brightness of an led so in the third wave you can see it has a 30 percentage of duty cycles where the period of the wave is on has increased and the last one you can see the wave where it undergoes the on phase is larger than the phase where it is at off so basically when you increase the phase where the wave is on will increase the duty cycle of it a pwm wave can be generated in two major types one is the fast and the other one is the phase current in the fast mode we will use only the increasing gradient of the wave whereas in the phase correct mode we will use both of the increasing and the decreasing mode of the wave when we look onto the atmega 32 shape there are specific pins from which we can get pwm outputs so those pins are known as OC0 pin which is PB3 and OC1A and 1B which is PD5 and PD4 respectively and which is OC2 which is PD7. If you want to get any other PWM outputs you have to use these pins of this Atmega32 chip. In order to program a PWM wave we need to configure the timer bit. In AVR microcontroller we have three major timers timer 0, timer 1 and timer 2. As we all know timer 0 and timer 2 is an 8-bit timer while timer 1 is a 16-bit timer. In the, for this video we are going to use the timer 0 which is an 8-bit timer and using this timer only we are going to generate our PWM waves. When we look onto the timer register of the timer 0 the initial 3 bits where 0, 1, 2 are used to select the clock source and the third one and the sixth one is used to select the wave generator mode and the fourth and fifth one which are com00 and com01 are used to select the wave mode either it is inverted or non-inverted and the seventh one is used to select force compare match the bit 7 foc0 is used to force compare match this is a write only bit when this bit is write to one it will forcefully generate a wave so this is the basic functionality of this bit in this timer register when we look onto the timer mode selection of timer 0 wgm00 and wgm01 can be set in four different modes for generating a pwm wave we will be using these two modes either the fast mode or the phase correct mode for the fast mode we will be setting the wgm00 as one or to get the phase correct mode we will set the both wgm00 and wgm01 bits of the timer register as one 
The wave mode selection bits of Atmega 32 Timer 0 also has two bits COM01 and COAM00. If these two bits also can be set in four different forms. In PWM generation, we are going to use the last two forms as non-inverted and inverted. By setting the COM01 to 1, we will get a non-inverted wave while setting the both COM01 and COM00 as 1, we will get inverted PWM wave. Now we have to set the timer register bits of clock 0. CS00, CS01 and CS02 are the register bits which are used to select the clock source of the PWM wave. From 001 to 101 we can select either any of these modes in order to make the internal clock as the timer for the PWM wave. As we all know if we set 001 it will uh, use the clock as it is and if we set any of these modes it will use a pre-scaling by dividing the frequency of the clock by these values and you can use those values to get more accuracy in your measurement. OCRX register bit. This is the major bit which we going to determine the value at which the interrupt should be produced. So from starting from 0 up to 0xff as shown in this figure we have a wide range of selection at which the interrupt should be produced. So when we set the OCRX bit, it means the clock output bits value to a certain value at which the interrupt should be produced. It will automatically generate interrupts when the timer value meets that value. We have to think about the need and set the OCR0 value at which phase we need the interrupt which should change the phase of PWM mode. So this is an important register under PWM section. As you all know the PWM waves can be generated in two major modes. One is fast mode and the other one is the phase correct mode. First of all we will be looking on fast PWM mode. Fast PWM mode can be clarified as inverted and non-inverted. In the fast PWM mode PC and T0 register will only use the increasing gradient cycles of the timer and also when the TC and T0 value matches the OCR0 set value it will start reducing interrupt which will be used to change the phase of the wave and the major difference between inverted and non-inverted version is when the OCR0 value is greater than the TC and T0 value the PWM wave will be in the on phase while in the non inverted mode when the timer value is greater than the OCR0 set value the PWM wave will be on on phase. The second mode in which an Atmega chip can produce its PWM wave is the phase correct mode. Under the phase correct mode also we have both inverted and non-inverted versions of output as you all saw in the fast mode we only use the increasing gradient of the timer counter value whereas in the phase correct mode we use both increasing and decreasing gradient of this as the fast mode this also will generate pulses when it means the set OCR0 value and also same as the fast mode the inverted mode will be in the on phase when the timer counter value is greater than as you all see in these two diagrams in the inverted mode when the timer counter value is above the OCR0 value the PWM wave will be on on phase while in the non-inverted version when the timer value is above the set OCR0 register bit value the PWM wave will be in the off phase or 
under zero voltage so these are the two major types of pwm wave modes which can be produced using an avr at mega chip we can choose the most appropriate mode for our project and use it in this video i will be using a face correct non-inverted mode to do the stimulations in this video we're going to look onto how to control the brightness of an led using pwm waves for that initially we have to initiate the pwm wave for that i'm using a function now well, let's look on to the initiation function of pwm wave for that as we all saw initially we have to set the register bits which we want according to our need in this i am going to use a face correct state pwm mode with non inverted version of output for that i am setting the wgm00 pin to 1 and com01 pin to 1 and cs00 pin to 1 as you all saw in the initial part of this video i am setting up the pccr0 register in order to generate pwm wave and also i am going to use the oc0 pin as the output so i am setting the pb3 pin of the ddr port b as an output after setting the timer register bit as per our requirement of the stimulation which we will be doing later in this video the final output will look like this the tccr0 register bit will look like 0b0110001 since we have only turned wgm00 com01 and cs00 bits of PCCR0 register to the high, the other bits will remain low. So the final binary representation of this bit will look like this. This may give you a proper idea on how to set the TCCR0 or TCCR1 or TCCR2 timer register bit in order to obtain your required output wave so if we look on to the total coding of this part we have the initiation function and this one is the main function in under the main function we are assigning a char value an unsigned char value with the name duty where initially we are initiating the pwm waves and we are assigning values for OCR0 register using this unsigned char variable so for this we are using a for loop where where it will increase the value of the char initially and it will decrease the value of the char when it attains 255 so we will get a symmetrical increase and decrease in the LED brightness of our project which we going to use this stimulation as i explained before i have for the code which we going to use to control the brightness of the led bulb so this code is simple as i explained earlier it con contains two major parts the pwm initiation and the main function here we going to use an unsigned char known as duty other than that we are defining the frequency of cpu 8 megahertz and also we are using only the avr input output header and the utility delay header now let's compile this project so as you all can see the build is succeeded and we have no errors in our code we can proceed further in building our circuit this is the simple circuit which we are using today to get the required output i have connected the basic red led to pb3 pin and i have used a 0.1 kilo ohms resistor and i have grounded it so this is the basic setup and i have loaded the code into our microchip and i have set the clock uh, pulse as 1 megahertz as in port is you will be able to see the stimulation clearly okay now let's see the stimulation So as you all see the brightness of the LED is gradually increasing 
but since it is 4 years which is a digital simulator I can't show you the exact scenario but as per my results I am showing you the maximum output I can at the current situation so I promise you to show the real time stimulation as soon as possible but in this also you can clearly see how the brightness of the LED started increasing from nothing to high and it is gradually decreasing to zero we did this using a simple pwm stimulation i hope this session was very informative and useful for you all if you feel the same please don't forget to like our video and subscribe to our channel